Welcome back to the Quiet Onset podcast powered by Cinnamon. I'm your host, Ewan Graf, and I'm joined by the other host of the show, Lachlan Teeley. What's up, my man? Uh, g'day, 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 all. Today's episode, we are talking about Bones and All, Luca Guadagnino's latest Timothy Chalamet love film. Does it flop or did you and I eat it all up? Here are spoiler filled thoughts shortly. Exactly. So uh, let's go over some, uh, I guess, uh, facts about the film before we uh, jump into our review. And I'll kick it off by reading you the synopsis of the film. Abandoned by her father, a young woman named Marin embarks on a thousand mile odyssey through the back roads of America where she meets Lee, a disenfranchised drifter. But despite their best efforts, all roads lead back to their terrifying past and to a final stand that will determine whether their love can survive the otherness. Isn't this beautiful, Lachlan? Yeah, it sounds oddly familiar to uh, something along the lines uh, of a previous film with Timothy Chalamet, directed by Luca Guadagnino. Don't look up. <laughs> yes, exactly. Don't look up. That's Adam McKay, but close enough. Close enough. Luca Guadagnino, Adam McKay, ah, potato, potato. Very similar at directing style. Uh, but no, the movie has been received very positively uh, so far, especially on Letterbox. I feel like it, this is the perfect Letterboxd film as well. It's huh. a 3.9 over there. 7.3 on IMDb. 75, somewhere in between, over on Metacritic. So a quite acclaimed film that premiered earlier this year in Venice. It's where I last saw it. Didn't get to rewatch it, so hopefully... Uh, some stuff stuck with me, still kind of uh, digesting it in some sense. Uh, it's 133 minutes long, uh, like we said, directed by Luca Guadagnino, the director of Call Me By Your Name, uh, the recent Suspiria remake, and that's pretty much, uh, I guess, the uh, biggest films he's done in the last few uh, in the last few years. Uh, it has an estimated budget of roughly 16 million dollars and so far at the box office has only made six million but i feel like it's a harder sell uh this is also notably in the us a wide release so for that i think it did uh, kind of disappoint so that means it released in over a thousand theaters uh there uh for that i think it is a bit of a, a low uh gross overall but uh lachlan let's uh shift gears and get into our review of the film so uh, what did you make of of bones and all I loved it. There was a part of me when I was walking out the cinema going, shit, I should give this a five out of five. I should give wow, this a four okay. and a half out of five. I, I really fell in love with the film so yeah. quickly. First 10 minutes and I was, and I was hooked. Um, I was shocked, but I was hooked yeah. because I was not aware of the story. Well, I mean, I kind of got, mm -hmm. I, I watched one trailer many, many weeks back. And yeah. I didn't really keep up with much of the film. I knew the concept. I knew there was a little bit of um, snacking in the film, but I didn't know what <laughs> the overall story was because uh, mm -hmm. I haven't read the novel either uh, that yeah. this film is uh, based on. But all I can say is that I had a, a fantastic time with this film. There, There is so many things that, oh, you look, you've got the book. I you do show have off. the novel. You, I, well, do you, I, I'm, do you I'm, also you do see, the same I, thing that you do with video games and just buy the book and then don't read it? I read uh, about the first 30 pages. <laughs> and? Thoughts? <laughs> it's, it's different. Uh, I, I okay. forgot to mention that this is a book adaptation, a novel adaptation. It, it goes a different route. I think uh, here in the film, um, you know, it starts off with her dad. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, yeah, I think it is with her dad. I think... Uh, in, in this, it's more uh, her mom, um, the initial like outset of what what makes her embark on her journey is also something totally different. It's a bit more of the backstory that we also get from her. But I didn't get far along into it. Uh, yeah. The thing Obviously, is, Obviously, you, you just know, got the bookmark and threw it in there somewhere and pretended you read like the first 30 pages. Yeah, it's like, it, oh, don't worry. <laughs> I'm doing the, what, what, who's <sighs> the, the famous um, basketball player that always lies. <laughs> that like has all these books ready and he never knows stuff like never there was, knows there was a recent about thing it. with him yeah uh, anyways I, I did read a bit of it but uh i think at, at some point i was lying and said like yeah no i'm halfway through i it definitely didn't get uh this far so i wanted to read it even before venice i ordered the book before i i got there in august and it just was delayed and delayed and delayed uh and i only got it like uh, a month or two ago now um so okay 
yeah, only just recently got it and I haven't had time to go through it. But so far, I, I, I get why this was adapted to screen. I think it sure. really and plays out nicely. And Yeah, um, your thoughts on the film? On Like, so what did you think? I, I think I, I went into it um, expecting to, to connect with it a bit more. And uh, I can't really say too much uh, without spoiling it just yet. We'll, we'll get into a spoiler parts in just a, in just a minute. But um, I, I didn't really like the way that it was kind of building towards something where I thought it didn't need to build to anything specifically. Uh, but I, I liked all of the moments where it was just about expanding this universe and, uh, you know, uh, joining along as characters try, try to figure out the world around them that they don't properly fit in. And I feel like Guadagnino does that quite well whilst not uh, reducing the characters that ha have like some aspect that makes them different from others uh, in, in just their suffering, uh, which mm. I, I tend to uh, like these movies that are about like LGBTQ plus topics or like, I guess, cannibalism. And this movie could be uh, like many other Two things very well. similar topics, obviously, <laughs> the LGBT community and also it's cannibalism. That's not what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's it's what just, you're trying to say. Like, <laughs> it can be extended as a metaphor in some sense. I, I didn't... I don't think it, it needs to be. The movie stands uh, on its own feet with like that really extra way of, of cannibalism uh, quite well. But um, no, I, I think it's just refreshing. His movies always feel like uh, they, they are fresh. They're in some way unique. And mm. I got to say, like the, the center performances, all of them are, are, are really quite enjoyable. I think they, they yep. quite work well. Uh, it's not a shoehorned in Timothy Chalamet. I don't know. How, how did you feel about his character? His performance wasn't my favorite. And right, funnily okay. enough, neither was Taylor Russell. Uh, the oh, okay. star of the show, in my opinion, goes to Mark uh, Rylance. Uh, Rylance? Yeah. I think his name is. Mark Rylance, uh, yeah. He just, every time he was in a scene, just, I was just locked on. I was just enjoying every moment because I was uncomfortable. I was like just amazed by this performance of this very uncomfortable character uh so for me like i i completely agree i don't think timothy chalamet's performance is as strong as i guess what everyone's going to compare it to and, and that's call me by your name yeah uh i, I would probably want to go back and re-watch it uh just so i can say yep definitely don't like it as much but i could probably already say i'm pretty much certain that it's a better performance in that film than this film uh, but yeah. for me, I still thought it was a, a great performance. A lot of the standout performances came from secondary characters. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Uh, Jake. Michael Stewart. Uh, in that one scene in the yeah. where they're talking with um, uh, Marin and Lee, is is he also stole that scene for me? Uh, yeah. But for the majority of the part, the 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 two key leads, uh, Timothy Chalamet and Taylor Russell as uh, Lee and Marin, uh are phenomenal i think they're great throughout the entire thing while it's not their best or I, at least i i'm not familiar with much of taylor russell's performances in the past mm. uh for me i still think that they carried the show quite well yeah i've seen her pop up in some things like uh, the escape room films that i for some reason uh watch both she also was i think a smaller part in in waves uh, from yep. uh, yeah, it's what a part in waves that I quite enjoyed. Uh, and I feel like she she really nailed it. I I remember I, I feel like thinking back now, I feel like Mark Rylance's performance is a bit more iconic and it stays with you. But uh, I remember coming out of Venice uh, out, out of the Venice screening and going like, uh, I don't know uh, if I liked how extra he was. And maybe uh, let's let's bridge on over to our spoiler discussion so I can I can maybe uh, actually pinpoint down what I didn't really like. Uh, yeah. what, what I didn't enjoy as much ab about his stuff. Uh, so last spoiler warning here, but um, I'm jumping straight to 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 the end here <laughs> because that's like my issue that, that I have with him. It's how he's then kind of coming back into the story. Where he's, I, I get the thing where, where he's following her for, for quite some time and he's kind of that creepy guy who uh, just doesn't want to be alone, I guess. And then uh, the whole plot point where it escalates to a whole bunch of them dying, uh, which it's just all a blend for me. I again, I've, I've seen this like three months ago. Lucky you have to, to catch me up on that. But it just feels like it's super messy where it, it didn't really need to be <clears> messy <throat> and he didn't really need to be in that like final part of the film, at, at least to me. Like he worked better as, as like a pit stop all along the road. But what did you I'm, think I'm about I'm not that? sure if 
uh, because I watched the film only a couple hours ago. Uh, yeah. Only, literally only a couple hours ago. You saw it a few yeah. months ago. I'm not sure if on a repeated viewing you'll be able to see his uh, van in the background. If that is the case, that is, I guess, right. a nice thing to rewatch and, and look out for in yeah. a viewing. I guess that is a bit of, it's a bit of a jarring moment. It does really come out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. But, you know, his, his, throughout the, in all of his interactions with Marin, uh, there is this underlying, I guess, tension with what his intentions are with her that you never really have satisfied. And even at the end of that scene where he's like, yes, I've been following you, you still kind of feel like there's something missing which is why I don't think it's a total left hook out of nowhere that he rocks up at the, at their house. I know we're jumping straight to the end. We're missing a whole, whole lot of stuff. I mean, we could talk but... about like the smell detection for cannibals. In a bit as well. <laughs> it's just like, um, it's, 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 and I'm also just reading the last few pages of the book and I can see that Sully is also in it. So sorry for the, yeah. for the book as well. Um, um, but, but, so, but for so, yeah, me, I don't, I don't think like, it's a, yeah. I don't think it's that jarring. I feel like there should be yeah. some more scenes with him. Yeah. showing that he's that he's there whether it be mm -hmm. kind of like a i don't even know like a rustle in the bush, bushes the kind of that marin's always seeing someone that's watching her maybe she loses her mind from the the, the cannibalism but um for, for me that the ending was still at least uh, rounding enough because it ends up being a hey i want you to bones and all me that that's a that's a massive yeah. thing in this in this film. Um, but, yeah. but but we should we should jump back because yeah, we should, the back. story is it's so much to take in with this film because yeah. at a, at a core level, if you just watch this, it's great. It's about these mm. two cannibals, young cannibals, trying to find themselves in this world. Um, yeah. So the, the three things that I wrote down that I I really want to get into is mm -hmm. we've already talked about one, the performances between the, the cast. Uh, I yeah. think Timothy Chalamet does a great job. I think Taylor Russell does a great job. But obviously I feel like Mark Rylance's performance as Sully stole the show for me because it mm -hmm. was such an interesting character. Um, but yeah. the, one of the other things I wrote down was the, the use of gore. And, it, and it's interesting mm -hmm. how, you know, it's the second movie this year that's a, a love story with cannibalism in it. Um, uh, yeah, but right. it's a completely different style and way of telling it because I feel like in the movie Fresh that uh, came out earlier this year, obviously the cannibalism aspect is kind of like a, a like a oh look at me I'm I'm a bit edgy and all of that. Ooh, where look at me! In it, look at me! Look at me! I've got no leg. Um, where in Bones and All there is a lot of metaphors going on in this film, and yeah, the yeah, cannibalism yeah. is is one of those. I didn't have that in fresh and I feel like there's going to be a lot of comparisons to this film because it's the second film this year. That's a love story, uh, which yeah. by the way, I'm going to say this right now. It's my favorite love story of the year. I'm sorry, bros. You don't Ooh. get it, but it's going to be this film. Oh, um, right. But for me, it's, it's, it's interesting how they use cannibalism as a, I guess a, almost like a comparison to a sexual desire because every time they describe mm. the feeling, it is a, somewhat sexual way of describing how eating someone gave them this rush and how there's this final kind of like as a as an eater in quotations because that's what they call themselves if you yeah. bones and all someone um that's like the ultimate i'm a i'm an eater kind of person so yeah. uh for me for me that the the use of this cannibalism as a way of indicating sort of love. Like I found for me, I like, again, you said that without going into it, this film stands on its feet and it really does. Yeah. But for me, when I was watching this film, the entire time I was thinking, what is the use of this cannibalism? Cause it's not used in a way that's just, we're going to eat people. It's more used as a, I guess, guiding technique on finding their identity as people. Yeah. Yeah. And I I yeah. found it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I feel like what sticks out here is where the cannibalism isn't like as it's definitely like a metaphor for 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 some other things to me at least mm. is that um it's it's more about like them coming to terms with who they are and not trying to avert being what they just are. 
It's like mm-hmm. the acceptance stage of what they are is already there. And I feel like that's already like a progressive thing for accepting like uh, like all, all the metaphors that it could stand for of stuff that you can yeah. accept about yourself. And it's, it's like that journey to coming to terms with, um, I guess, here where the metaphor kind of ends, where they are impacting actual uh, human lives that, that, that they are taking. And yeah. you can't dexter it and just go for like bad people. Uh, you know, <laughs> then like justify it that way. And I, f- I feel like that aspect is is a bit in in the background because they just have that drive and they just they just have to. And you kind of I get glimpses of it where like the guilt comes comes in. And I feel like uh, yeah, that's, that, there's some interesting moments in there. And I don't know. I I, I feel like it would have been a way duller movie if they focused more on that. But it's it's yeah. always yeah. it still has like that young spirit, you know the because the will it's it's to not live. it's not like a horror. It, it's a love movie first. It, that's yeah. that's the first thing. This movie is not a a horror cannibal film. It's a exactly. love story between Lee and Marin, and that is the center yeah. stage. That is always the center stage, no matter what. Whether they are trying to hunt someone down and eat them, whether it's a scene with them driving, it, every mm. single moment is building their relationship, and every single scene is. Again, the entirety of this film I found was, again, you know, you can go into the metaphor of what cannibalism means, but it's a, it's a film about identity, who they are, because yeah. they're both on a journey to figure out where their place is in the world. Neither of them have a family that they feel like they can go back to, um, literally at the end, like neither of them do, um, because, you know, his sister gets eaten and her mum tried killing her, so there's a lot of that uh, in there, but... For me, it's, you know, yeah. each scene that we went through, even though some of them could just be standalone little moments, every single aspect for it was just like, this is just building their character. This is them mm. all trying to figure out they're making mistakes like they did with that guy who had a family, even though they had this desire and want to eat him, which is an interesting sentence I've just said that's come out of my mouth. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it is the, an actual thing. I think it, it's an it's actual like, thing. I don't ask me why I know this, but I think something called war. I think is what it's called. That's like the sexual desire to to eat, to eat or be eaten or something like that. So like Stop that, sounding that so confused. I know you've researched this, Ewan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a meme online. That's why I know it. I, I don't yeah. actually know if it's like getting eaten or eating yeah. someone because that would just be ca- cannibalism, and I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that's just. Anyways, it's it's like you know. Interesting how Army Hammer wasn't in, involved direction. in this project. <laughs> sure. Previously uh, worked with Luke. Uh, Luca De, uh, sorry, I won't make. We won't make I, those I jokes. Like, we could like we could go all day um, about making those jokes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's 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 a funny movie overall to make jokes about because it's like it's going so plainly ab- about that 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 part of them. Uh, so mm. I feel like you 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 wanted to talk about gore. And I feel like the gore moments are sometimes the most intimate ones because oh, yeah. you know it's it's usually about like them like two characters sharing their their their, their same desire uh, and and uh, and yeah kind of dwelling in that. So and it's not uh, like the gore yeah. is it's not like the 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 cannibalism as you said it's like a very intimate experience. It's not like it's a romanticized thing either in a sense in the sense that in the sense that if you think of like another cannibal, very famous cannibal, Hannibal Lecter. He is preparing his meals, cooking them, sitting down, eating them with a knife and fork. These guys are on their hands and knees, tearing out the flesh with their, with their mouth from the body of that person. It's not a beautiful experience. It's not a, you know, stunning thing to look at, but it's still super intimate. And they've got you know, blood running down them. And they're having these conversations that you would not think to have when you're literally eating someone with someone else. I don't know what it is about uh, because I, I haven't, I guess, gotten to that part in the novel. But I feel like those like moments, those best moments, I can really clearly attribute to Luca Guadagnino's uh, directing. And then when mm. it comes to like a finale like this, I just thought it stood out as something that's not that's like an adaptation of a novel that he has to work in. I don't yep. know if he would have ended that movie if he had like more control over that aspect. And I mean, he does adaptation. He does remakes of Suspiria. He does uh, an adaptation for Call Me By Your Name. So he's he, he is clearly in there, not as a writer, but an adapter. But 
I don't know. I, I, I feel like I just wanted a different ending. Uh, with I feel like a lot trauma. of your your my criticism even comes just, from the wait, final criticism line. is just the ending. That's all it is. Yeah, it's just, I feel yeah. like that's your it, yeah. So if if okay, so obviously you haven't read the book, and we're just gonna finished assume it. because I haven't you finished it. Fl- I've read you haven't it. finished it. Part of read, yeah, um, you know, you, sure, I can drive a car, but I've just turned the ignition on. Yeah. I anyway, just have to wheel. Um, I'm just, I'm just yeah. driving in virtual reality. I'm, I'm, I'm driving. I got my driver's license, technically. Your biggest criticism with this film is the ending. And for me, I can kind of skip past the whole shocking, here's Sully kind of moment uh, because Dear of Sully. the final, the final, I guess, uh, motif of Marin doing bones and all. You know, it was, it was mm-hmm. Lee's last request of being stabbed of him going, oh, yeah, just, I want you to bones and all me. Like, for, for me... That's what the whole film was building up to. A moment of bones and all. Where I, was, yeah. I thought these two were going to bones and all someone together. And that was going to be like their yeah. big moment. But for me, it was more dramatic that it was, that it was her doing it to him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you don't really see much of the act. And then it cuts back to that shot of them. It's a stunning shot of them on, on the field, on that open plane that they were kind of camping. on. Which I, I want to get back to the cinematography. But yeah. to, to wrap up this criticism of the ending, because obviously you are so focused on this, what would you prefer? I, I would like to ask, what would you prefer the ending to kind of be if it's not going to be this? Uh, just something that's uh, way smaller where uh, maybe there is, like maybe Sully does kill uh, his sister, Lee's sister, and they kind of just are not able to repair their relationship from there because there's maybe some kind of blame that's around or just like some kind sure. of standoff where the three of them just talk and it's irreparable what happens there. Irreparable. I can't say that properly, but you get what I'm saying. And then they all go their separate way. Okay. That's kind of, to me, what a, what a Dino movie is. It's like what about, you want something, what about you want this? connection, but you ultimately can't get it. Yeah. What about, what about Sully about kills the, the, the sister and the final shot is... Timothy Chalamet crying in a ball next to a fireplace, reading a note. Crying in a, a ball? What do you mean? Yeah, the ending of Call Me By Your Name. Don't worry, I will explain oh. the joke later. <laughs> but you can edit that out. No, no, I was don't so, worry about it. I was it. so trying to, to connect it. I thought that joke was going to land a lot better, you and because <laughs> no, you're such a Call Me now. By Your Name. No, 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 yeah. no, no. You don't get it. We're moving on from that one. No. Um, the cinematography. Then he gets a phone call from the dead. That's, I think that's just in the novel. Or is the that cinematography. In the movie as well? The cinematography, yeah, uh, outstanding, um, phenomenal. I feel like it's a very pretty movie, right? Also, I think it's this cinematographer's kind of like big break, feature film break, because his, oh, their, I don't know, Arenci Kancha run. I butchered that. Uh, it looks like this is their big break in the uh, yeah. feature film lineup because their entire credits on imdb seems to be shorts and video and small films mm-hmm. documentary kind of thing it looks like to be their big break and my gosh yeah. am i just blown away because i feel like the cinematography is one of the biggest standouts of this film it is so yeah. possibly my favorite of the year uh it is so wide in capturing some of these beautiful landscapes and these areas but also it is capturing some such little detail on any character it, it can be so in your face, up close, but also kind of showing so much at the same time. It's 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 so so good. I don't remember Call Me by Your Name being as pretty. I remember having that film look, which everyone was kind of like, "Oh yeah, look at film look. It looks great." Which this yeah. film also has that look as well. I'm going to assume it was shot on film. Here we doing we're doing a quick fact so, check. Yeah. Uh, shot on 35 millimeter. Stunning. Uh, has that beautiful film look to it, which I guess Call Me by Your Name also had, but. There was just something else about it. It kind of like the, the, the cinematography spoke for itself. I really enjoyed those whip pans as well, focusing on a landscape, then cutting up close to a character. Every time I did that, I was like, ooh, someone watched, yeah. uh, I'm trying to think of the movie, La La Land, and was like, I want to do that. I feel like Bones and All doesn't as much scream shot on 35 millimeter as much as Call Me By Your Name. But yeah. Call Me By Your Name, I feel like also would work as a period. It, it's weird enough that like, his films, this would also work if it's like shot in the 70s. Like it feels like that type of road trip, uh, just two characters yeah. uh, by themselves with, um, I guess, also not as many uh, indicators that 
maybe they get caught along the way. I feel like they can operate a bit more freely. That's why they are just like traveling the back skirts um, and, and the, the, the midlands <laughs> of mm. like uh, middle America or somewhat uh, like these small little towns that they hit. They can ditch and hit. Uh, dine and dash. Dine and dash, exactly. They dine oh, and yeah, dash cool. in, in these little towns. And uh, t- to me, I feel like um, this is not as hard to sell as I would expect a cannibal movie to be, if I'm being honest. Yeah. It's surprisingly earnest and easy to, pun intended, consume. Um, and leaves you with, uh, yeah, some afterthoughts. And... Um, Lachlan, you said initially that uh, when you came out of the theater, this was like potentially a five banger for you or even four <laughs> and a half. So yeah. where did you kind of arrive at uh, as, as your uh, I'm ending up on a four. I was on a high. I, I really was. I, I, I was. I loved this film. I was really enjoying yeah. it. It's one of the best, uh, one of the best like little drama films I've watched recently uh, because mm-hmm. it was a great mixture of a love story and an in-your-face cannibalism story at the same time. It was just such an interesting combination. So I ended up on a four because Mm -hmm. I do agree in a lot of senses that the, the ending is a little bit, whoa, holy fuck. Why is it? Why is he here? Kind of situation. And there are a couple things I have an issue with as, as we discussed at the start, I don't think it's Timothy Chalamet's greatest performance. Um, I think the core two, while they are good, I don't think they're incredible enough to continue the show as it goes on. But, uh, yeah, for me, this is a, uh, a four out of five. Agreed there. I feel like, uh, other than the ending, like you just mentioned again, I don't really have much against this film. The vibes are just immaculate. I, I really enjoy all of the performances, good vibes. uh, to me, Taylor Russell and Timothy Chalamet, even over Mark Rylance, uh, I, I like him, but uh, but yeah, they were also really solid there. Um, so four out of five for me. So a solid recommendation for the both of us. Uh, if you can't catch this in the wide release that it's doing in the US right now, um, I feel like this movie is going to hit streaming uh, sooner than later, probably uh, before the end of the year. Probably, so go probably on Amazon then. Prime because it's an NGM film. Oh, yeah, uh, could potentially be. That's what I reckon. And the thing with Prime... I have no clue what no idea. they're doing with any no of idea. the films. It so could be anywhere. I don't know when we'll get it. Uh, it could just be that they also just put it on Amazon and not on Prime. You never know, but uh, I feel like on VOD, it will be out uh, sooner than later. I don't know if mm. they have like a deal with new MGM films that also, uh, or if it's just like the library that they purchased. But that goes into a different discussion. Now, uh, Lachlan, we usually only do this on the main episodes where we connect uh, uh, the, the film we just reviewed. Um, but yeah, Lachlan, what would you uh, put alongside uh, Bones and all? Um, well, there's a lot of, I guess, pick of the weeks that I could assign people who listen to this podcast to go watch before this, after this. Um, so there's so many yeah. cannibal films. You know, you've got Silence of the Lambs, mm-hmm. you've got Hannibal, you've got, uh, what's the craziest cannibal movie of all time? Cannibal, um, there's that, there's that really bad one that got all the bad reviews back in the day. It's like Cannibal Red Holocaust Dragon. or something like that. Um, oh. no, no, not Red Dragon, but like Cannibal Holocaust. Like they actually killed like oh. animals on screen and it's like super okay. low rated. Um, mm. but it's like the very famous okay. cannibal film. Uh, right. but as I said earlier, there was another film earlier this year that came out. That is a love story. Not really. It's more of a comedy, uh, gore film, uh, called Fresh. Yeah. The... Daisy Edgar Jones, Sebastian Stan, horror comedy, I guess. Comedy horror. Comedy horror. This is the, you know, you know uh, Bones and All is, 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 a, is a love uh, love horror film. This is Fresh is a comedy horror uh, film. So I'll tell you what, if you want to watch this film and cry and love what you saw in Bones and All, go watch Fresh if you want to have a good laugh. There's a lot of iconic moments in it. And... If you like Timothy Chalamet's dancing, wait till you see Sebastian Stan's dancing. It's not to kiss, but it's a fucking good scene. Great pick from you. Uh, I'm kind of going along the same route of having the initial letter of an R at the start of... Wait, no, it's fresh, not (laughs) fresh. Never mind. I don't know how I could... It's all right. English is your second language, man. Don't worry. 
So uh, the two of our picks kind of go together well because I'm going with uh, Raw from Julia Ducourneau, I think is her name. Uh, she last made uh, or made waves with Ditan uh, that got the Palme d'Or in uh, Gun. And this is a very disturbing uh, film uh, about a 16-year-old that's uh, also... It's a bit coming of age, but I think it, it's a bit like grittier. If you've seen Titan, then you kind of get the vibes for this as well. Uh, it's also streaming on Netflix in the US, so you can go check that one out. Uh, gritty film, but uh, go give it a try. Uh, it might disturb you, though. Uh, but that wraps it up for our review. Now, um, next up on the Quiet On Set podcast, we got a review for the Knives Out sequel, Glass Onion. That's what we'll be talking about next week. So uh, don't forget to drop those likes and subscribe in the meantime to not miss those new episodes. You didn't say it's Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. You didn't say it's the a, title correctly. <laughs> okay, it's Please. Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, to clarify. It, I did Thank say you. it's a sequel to Knives Out, but I guess you yeah, also have but to mention it's a Knives Out because we do Mich need those nice out stupid mystery. little things. You, you, you yeah, didn't for publication nice, sake, nice to not get sued by Netflix to have the wrong title, accidentally called Wednesday, Thursday, and she was really mad. Anyways, uh, you can also follow us on all of our other socials. Those are linked below for Quiet On Set. We got a link tree and all of our personal socials are there as well. So um, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. Let us know your thoughts on Bones and All if you've seen it or if you plan to see it. And uh, we'll see you soon. See you next Tuesday.